Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Storytime with Rob. Another beautiful day here. I love it. I had to come outside, and you can see our, I think they're clematis. They're in full bloom. Everything is beautiful in the yard. Just loving it. So anyway, I wanted to welcome you today. A um, couple things. I uh, want to shout out to my son, Hiram. It's his birthday today, number five of six. Um, turning 21 hard to believe but anyway we're excited for him and hope he has a wonderful day and today's story is you're gonna have to follow along pretty careful some of you may get this mainly some of you older folks but there's some really good uh, information in it and stuff I didn't know so I hope you enjoy this see if you can figure it out before we get to the end this one is called, We Never Sleep. Alan was a Chartist. Perhaps I'd better explain, however. Chartism was a movement for democratic social and political reform. The first nationwide working class movement in Great Britain. It took place between 1836 and 1848, and it was named after something called the People's Charter. The Chartists promoted their cause vociferously, sometimes even violently. And Allen was, in fact, a Chartist, a rabble rouser, according to the King. Indeed, Allen had participated in Chartist roots in Glasgow. A police sergeant was wounded. Now the police were looking for Allen. There was even a price on his head. Allen was an outlaw. In the winter of 1842, the authorities thought they had trapped him. They went to the, the tenement house where he was last seen, but the young Scot had fled. For months thereafter, Chartist comrades hid him in attics and secret rooms throughout the country. Early in March, it was arranged that Alan's sweetheart, Joan, be brought to him. Alan explained that he would have to leave for America soon and make a fresh start. But how lonesome his exile would be without the girl he truly loved. Joan accepted Alan's proposal, and they were married secretly on the 13th. Four weeks later, they were smuggled aboard a, bound, a ship bound for the New World. This was only the beginning of an adventure the young outlaw and his bride would never forget. After a stormy passage, their ship struck a rock and sank, you can imagine that, off the coast of Nova Scotia. Alan and Joan made it to shore in a lifeboat. By May, they had reached Montreal, where Alan, a barrel maker by trade, managed to get a temporary job making beer barrels. Eventually, the couple settled in Dundee, Illinois, where Alan opened his own shop. What happened then is the rest of the story. Alan had heard that there was a gang of counterfeiters at large. When he, Alan, spied the gang's forest hideout, he ran and told the local sheriff. The sheriff said he would need assistance in the capture. Alan was temporarily deputized. I say temporarily. And yet, from that day until the last day of his life, Alan, a wanted man in his own country, a young fugitive with a price on his head, would pursue a career in law enforcement. Once an outlaw, now and forever after, a law man. Kane County Sheriff's Office, Chicago Police Department, finally his own private detective agency with offices in Chicago and New York and Philadelphia. While similar agencies of that era had grimy reputations, Allen's organization, however, was very prestigious. 
He refused to investigate the sexual morales of otherwise law-abiding citizens. He also refused to regulate fees on a basis proportional to the amount of money recovered in the theft. Soon Allen and the super crime busters serving under him were known nationwide as the best of the good guys. Imagine that. It was Allen and his investigators who uncovered an early plot to assassinate President Lincoln and who first proposed the organization of a national secret service. Some called Allen's transformation from outlaw to lawman remarkable. But then, maybe law enforcement was in his blood. Remember the police sergeant back in Glasgow? You remember the one who was wounded in the Chartist riots? He was a rioter, char rioter Chartist Allen's father. <laughs> he was the one who was injured. And one more thing, the motto of Allen's always vigilant detective agency was, we never sleep. The graphic design, which always appeared above the slogan, was an open, alert human eye. I think you've all seen that before, haven't you? For that reason, we still call private investigators private eyes. We still refer, if unwittingly, to the sign above the door of the detective agency that would appear and bear Allen's name thenceforth, a name of the Scottish policeman's son, the young man with a price on his head, the fugitive from justice who is destined to make justice his life, Alan Pinkerton. And now you know the rest of the story. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until tomorrow, be safe.